All right, guys. After further consideration and trying to draw the graphs, uh, we already have the technology to do it. We can just draw the graphs on Desmos. So all I really want you to do is uh, come up with the amplitude, period, vertical shift, and phase shift. Points that matter we'll kind of leave out now uh, because we can just draw those uh, on Desmos. So the first thing, if, if we look at this example, uh, just going over what each of these means again. Our number that's out in front of the trig function is always going to be what our amplitude is. Uh, this number inside of here is going to determine our period. For cosine and sine, our normal period is 2 pi. So then we'll use this number to figure out what it would be for this one. Then we can do a vertical shift if the number is outside of here, which in this case there isn't one, so there's no vertical shift. I hope I put vertical shift problem in here. I'll throw one in. Um, and then... The phase shift will determine last because we need part of it from the period. So, okay, easy enough. Our amplitude for this one is going to be 4. And that is 4 because, well, that's what our number out in front of here is. That's saying that from our whatever our vertical shift would take it to, uh, in this case it stays at the x-axis, it's going to go up 4 from the x-axis and down 4 from the x-axis. Our period now, uh, to find that, we look at the fact that we had 2 pi as our normal period for a cosine function. So now that it's 4 times the cosine, uh, in order to find what our new period is, we do 2 pi over 4. So we're just dividing the normal period by this number because this number actually makes the graph get uh, skinnier or thinner. Gives it a, a horizontal compression. So our new period is pi over 2. So now that our period is pi over 2, we can find a vertical shift. In this case, there's no number added outside of here. So we have a vertical shift, shift of 0. And then we have our phase shift. When we looked at our, how we found our period, we took the original period, which was uh, 2 pi, and divided it by 4. So for our phase shift, we also have to divide that by 4. So our phase shift is currently 5 pi over 6 to the right, which means that I have to do 5 pi over 6 times one-fourth. Let's give us 5 pi over 24 for our phase shift. So now that we have that phase shift in place, that's the last number we actually have to find, and that moves it to the right. So if you just draw an arrow, that tells me all I need to know. I can then graph this in Desmos. And I know there's some settings over here. Um, leave it in radians mode. It should be in radians mode naturally. So it's 4 cosine 4 theta minus 5 pi over 6. What are the chances I can remember that? 4 cosine 4. Make it x now. Minus five if you just type pi it finishes it out for us and that's what our graph looks like and so we can see everywhere where it touches zero this is the cosine function so our starting point because it was a cosine, should be at 5 pi over 6. Or at 5 pi over 24, because that was our phase shift. 
uh, it's start at four because the cosine function normally, if I just do cosine x, when it was equal to zero, it would start at one. So the amplitude made that go up to four. The phase shift changed that to five pi over 24. And so that should be our, that would have been our first point on my graph is we looked at those uh, important points. I would then take five pi over 24 and add uh, pi over eight to that, which would give me pi over three. And that would take me to the zero. My next critical point would be adding pi over eight to pi over three, which would give me 11 pi over 24. And then add pi over eight to that as well. And you would get this seven pi over 12. All right, next question. Our amplitude for this one is going to be three. The period, period for sine is also two pi. So it's two pi over four again, which gives us pi over two is a period just taking 2 pi, my normal period, and dividing it by 4. Vertical shift, I'll go ahead and throw a minus 3 in here. That just means that it's going to drop it down 3. So vertical shift goes down 3. And then the phase shift, uh, I do pi over 2 times 1 fourth, just 1 over this number. So that gives us pi over 8 for a phase shift. It's plus in this case, so it moves it to the left. Now, whenever I graph this, three sine, four X plus pi over two minus three, Four, of course, 4x plus pi over 2. Then I did minus 3. The sine function normally starts at 0, 0. So if I look at what my phase shift did, my phase shift moved it to the left to the left pi over eight and this moved it down three so i should be starting at negative pi over three negative pi over eight and down three so negative pi over eight and negative three that should be right in here i don't know why we switched back to uh being not uh, in radians again, like it not giving me a pi as far as that stuff goes. Now there's a pi over two, but if I actually did a line at y equals negative three, it might give us the point where they intersect. There you go, negative pi over eight and negative three. So that's really all there is to this. Uh, again, your important points, they matter, but it's tough to find them. Um, and since we are at home, we can use this technology for using Desmos. But those would be your important points here. Negative pi over eight, zero, zero, pi over eight, pi over four, and then the last one to finish it out, three pi over eight. I think I have a tangent one. We'll jump to the tangent one. This cosine one will be exactly the same. You're going through the same exact process. For the tangent one, it changes. And the only change here is that our normal period for tangent is pi over, or I'm sorry, it's, it's just regular pi instead of two pi. So cotangent and tangent are just pi for a period.
and then this is already theta over 2. So instead of being pi, it's now pi divided by 1 half, which actually gives us 2 pi for a period for this. The amplitude is 4, but we don't really say amplitude for tangent functions because that amplitude uh, really only affects whenever we're looking at uh, the sine and cosine functions. So for tangent, we'll put amplitude as none. I will show you what the 4 does to the graph, but it doesn't create this function that's flowing up and down by the same amount each time. Our vertical shift in this case would be 0 because there's no number behind all of this. And our phase shift now, we would do the negative pi over 4, which means it moves to the right. And then just like before, we would divide it by this number here, which is 1 half. So I'm doing negative pi over 4 divided by 1 half, which means I flip the bottom one and multiply. So it's negative pi over 4 times 2 over 1. So that's negative pi over 2 for our phase shift. I can graph this. Four ten x over two minus pi over four. And that's what my graph looks like. So for the tangent function, you can tell how different it is from the sine and cosine functions. And that's because we have these asymptotes that show up here and here. And those are based off the fact that, remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So anytime the cosine is zero, it's going to give us one of those asymptotes. All right, well, that is the lesson for today. Tomorrow we're going to go over some homeworks uh, that we need to catch up on, and then uh, that'll be basically it. I'm giving you a homework assignment tonight that's due tomorrow. I recommend checking out tomorrow's lesson.